What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to a new review. For today we have a brand new mini PC from Billing called the Billing S2. So with this one we get a brand new Intel Celeron N4100 processor. This is a quad core processor clocked at 1.1 GHz but with a turbo boost up to 2.4 GHz. Aside from that we get either 4 or 8 gigs of RAM, I have the version that has 4 gigs of RAM and we also get 64 gigs of internal storage and the device comes pre-installed with Windows 10 the home edition. Out of that 64 gigs of internal storage we only have about 35 gigs left after the operating system and the speeds for the internal storage aren't the greatest out there, however they are still a bit better than the last um, mini PC that I tried from Billing. Now that internal storage can also be expanded fairly easy, so on the back of the device we have a little plastic door and if you remove that um, plastic door you have access to a 2.5 inch bay for a SATA drive and if that's not enough for you, you can take the whole mini PC apart um, and we also have an M2 SSD slot in there. And talking about taking the mini PC apart, um, this is a fanless mini PC and that means that um, it doesn't have a fan inside and it's not gonna make any noise. So you can find this for about $200 and for $200 it does offer pretty good value but if you plan on buying something like this I recommend that you buy the version that has 8 gigs of RAM because it's gonna make it more future proof. And with that being said let's start with a very quick unboxing. So this comes in a very similar looking box to what we've seen in the past for previous billing mini PCs. Inside the box we obviously get the mini PC, we get a, a user manual, the user manual is in a whole bunch of languages but it doesn't have that much information. We have a power adapter and this is um, once again the same power adapter that we've seen in the past. We have a couple of HDMI cables, one of them um, it's very short and um, the other one it's a bit longer. And we also have a little mount so you can mount this behind the TV or a monitor. The device itself it's mostly made out of plastic, at the top we see the billing logo and on the front we have a USB-C port, we also have two USB-3 ports, we have a slot for an SD card so if you need more expandable storage, we also have the power button which luckily is on the front and we also have a little microphone sitting on the front and that's great mostly if you plan on using that voice assistant that's built in on Windows 10. On the sides and at the bottom we have some holes so the heat can dissipate easier and moving to the back there we have the port for the power adapter, we also have two HDMI ports and that's great mostly if you plan on connecting these to two monitors. We have the network adapter port and two other USB ports and of course the 3.5mm audio jack. So you can connect some um, headphones or speakers to this mini PC. For connectivity we have dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0. Of course having Bluetooth connectivity is helpful because this you can connect some Bluetooth mouse and keyboard and this way you're gonna get rid of wires. Even though we don't have an external Wi-Fi antenna, the range and speed over Wi-Fi and over a wired connection are pretty good as well. Now keep in mind that um, I use a mesh Wi-Fi system at home, therefore the Wi-Fi in my house is pretty much better than um, any other place. So keep that in mind, the range may be different depending on um, your Wi-Fi connectivity around your house. Since this is running a full version of Windows 10, the home edition, of course you're going to have access to everything that Windows has to offer, including updates and the, of course the Windows Store. And this is also an activated copy of Windows 10, but keep in mind that whenever you're going to set this up for the first time, there are a whole bunch of updates available and it's going to take between 4 and 6 hours to get everything installed. And what would one of these videos be without some benchmark results? So of course I ran Passmark on this one and the Geekbench 4. And the scores that I got um, on those two benchmark tests um, were about 10 to 15% higher than other mini PCs that I tried in the past um, using the Intel N3450. Now even though the scores are a bit higher, I haven't actually noticed any difference in performance. So you do get kind of the same performance in between this and uh, another mini PC using the um, Intel N3450. Since most people will probably use a mini PC like this to check their email, watch YouTube videos and probably browse the internet, I checked to see how the browser would perform if you're using multiple tabs at the same time. So I had a YouTube video running in one of the tabs and I opened various websites in other tabs and um, the only lag that I noticed was um, when you're switching from one tab to other. Other than that it did pretty good. Now keep in mind that if you want to watch YouTube videos at a higher resolution than 1080p you're probably gonna have to use Edge because um, Edge works much better for higher resolution videos than Chrome does and it probably has to do the software optimization. A mini PC like this will probably be used um, for watching Netflix or Amazon videos as well and of course I went ahead and tried um, Netflix with it. So I used the Netflix app that um, is available in the Windows Store and aside for a bit of buffering at the beginning of the videos um, it performed great for Netflix as well. 
So if you're buying this as a multimedia device, it's gonna do great for um, all those um, online streaming um, services. Since you're talking about movies, you're probably gonna want to connect some external hard drives to this and I tried a couple of external hard drives. One of them um, had external power, the other one didn't have um, any external power and they both seem to work fine. Now, you may come across some hard drives that aren't gonna work with this and if that's the case, you may need to buy like a powered um, USB dongle and then um, your hard drive is gonna get enough power. So it really depends what hard drive um, you are using but the ones that I tried with this did seem to work fine. Now that you have your hard drive connected, you're probably gonna wanna play some movies or TV shows on your mini PC. So of course I tried a whole bunch of um, video files to see which ones would do good and which ones wouldn't. So I tried some 4K files at 60 and 50 frames per second, but unfortunately they didn't work um, with the built-in um, video player. After that I installed a VLC player and for um, the VLC player with the VLC player they did work, however there was a bit of lag here and there. So. For 4K at uh, 60 and 50 frames per second, this mini PC is not gonna do that great, which is kind of strange because the last uh, mini PC that I tried from Billing did um, very well for those files. Uh, I've also tried 4K at 30 frames per second and that um, worked great without any issues and I've also tried other video files as well and I'm just gonna let you guys and see which video files did good and um, which video files didn't. मेरा बर्फ का धंधा तुम्हारे बैग का न देखा कोई ऐसा सर्दियों से ये अभी हाँ बिल्कुल शुक्रिया इन्हें सुरक्षित रखिएगा I even tried some editing with it and I'm not talking about video editing, I'm talking about um, picture editing. So the experience here isn't that great and uh, I've also used a lighter program like Photoshop Express. So as you can probably see for yourself there is quite a bit of lag um, whenever you're changing colors or um, anything that um, you're doing there. So it is possible but um, you're gonna have to take uh, your time with it and you're gonna have to be patient because um, well this is not a powerful machine and that's how it's gonna work for um, picture or video editing. 
I've also tried a couple of games on this and even though the gaming experience is not um, exceptional, I think this did a bit better than the last um, mini PC that I tried from Billing. So I tried Minecraft and that one does um, work fairly good and then I tried Asphalt 8 and for Asphalt 8 I played a multiplayer game and it did okay, maybe a couple of um, skipped frames here and there, but overall for a mini PC I think the performance was good enough. I'm just gonna let you guys watch for a few seconds so you can see how the device performs for gaming. And it's time to conclude this video. So like most mini PCs, this is intended for light usage. I mean, you're not gonna get some crazy performance from this. This one is nice because you can easily expand the internal storage to the SATA drive because with other ones you have to get like a M2 SSD. So this one is much easier for that. But um, the performance in between this and another mini PC using the N3450 CPU, it's very, very small. So if you come across another mini PC using the Intel N3450, you can probably get that one and the performance is going to be very, very similar and most people aren't even going to notice the difference. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.